Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I've got a very, very useful, hopefully, tutorial about how to use MS Spark Utils. So MS Spark Utils is a collection of utility functions that help us do things like manage file systems on our Spark clusters. It helps us to manage notebooks. So there's some things for helping us programmatically run notebooks and return things from notebooks within another notebook, if that's a bit, bit meta, but we'll get into what each of these things mean. And it also helps us deal with credentials. So how do you connect to Azure Key Vault? How do you connect to other things? And so this is gonna be hopefully a very useful session. Let's dive into it. So the first thing that I wanna look at is the file system part of MS Spark Utils. So if you're used to a bit of shell scripting or bash scripting, you can use this ls function that helps us, it basically lists, lists the directory, right? But if you've tried that in a Spark notebook, it's not particularly helpful because perhaps we might want to get the files from this file location. It's difficult to understand how to access that from using this kind of shell thing. So if ever you want to explore the files in your files area programmatically, you can use this MS Spark Utils. So let's dive into this. So we can start by importing from Notebook Utils, import MS Spark Utils. That's our import statement. And it's broken down into a few different sections, the ones that I mentioned previously. So file system, utils, notebook, utils, credentials, utils, and what we can do is we're going to start with the file system stuff, right? And if we call this method dot help, it's going to show us what is available to us in this part of the library. So msparkutils.fs.help. So these are the methods available to us. We've got cp, which is copy. And you notice a lot of these are kind of direct translations from the world of bash scripting and shell. So this is going to be copy one file from one directory to another directory. Fast copy is a new functionality that's just recently come out, but it allows you to do the same, but fast, hence the name. MV is moving a file. LS is to list the contents, which is what we've just seen previously. Make a new directory. Put, which means to write some output into a file exists is a very important one so we can check whether a file exists in our files location so this would be really good it obviously returns a boolean right so if this file exists at this file path then we can load it into a, a data frame for example would be a good way of using that mount is a very important one as well because it allows us to hook into mount external data sources so maybe you've got a ADLS container, Azure Data Lake container, or maybe even another Lakehouse files area, we can mount that into our code cell, basically, and read data from that if we have permissions. And then a few related ones to mount is unmount and mounts. So do we have any mounts? So let's just try one of those. So we've got msparkutils.fs.ls, so we're going to be listing the files and we're going to pass in kind of the directory that we want to list. So I want to list this files area and you can see we've got lots of files here and it's giving us the ABFS path to each file, right? So we can see there's this files.dim customer and these are all in this adventure. Yeah, so we've got like dim customer, dim employee, dim reseller, and these are listed here, right? So it's got the name of the file, the path of the file, and the size of the file. And so you can do things like this. So if I just get the first file in that list, and then you can access properties about that file, like the name and the path and the size, like so, which might be useful or not. You can't access the modified date or anything to do with the date uploaded. So if you do want that information, it's probably best to encode that into the, the file name, right? So if you have a, a date time of when that file is written into your file's location, then you can extract it from the name here. Okay, so we can do all of these different things. I'm just gonna show you the list contents today, but 
all of these are available to us and perhaps in a future video I'll spend a bit more time going into each one of these. I just want to get through all of these different sections of MS Spark Utils today. So next we come on to the, let's just close these. So next we're going to come on to the notebook utilities. So we're working in a notebook, but we also have more utilities to help us manage and run different notebooks from this notebook. So again, let's do the dot help method on here, just to understand what is available to us. And you can see that there's three different methods here. We've got exit, which is a method that lets you exit a notebook with a value. And that's very, very useful, right? So we can return values from a notebook using this exit functionality. Now this exit method can only be called when you're not in interactive mode. So currently we're in interactive mode, right? We're interacting with this notebook, but the exit method only works when you're running kind of a scheduled run of a notebook. So you might use this by going down a whole path of data engineering steps, and then in the final code cell, you'll have msbotutils.notebook.exit, and then you'll pass in that string value, and it might be a simple error message or success message or something like that that you can then handle in your data pipeline. The next one is run. So what this is going to do is it runs a notebook, right? So within a notebook cell, we can run another notebook. What this allows us to do is build some quite complex kind of parent-child type relationships within notebooks, okay? So you can have one main notebook that calls a variety of different notebooks that are embedded within them, that you call this run method to run them, and they return this exit value, right? So you can have one kind of master notebook do this piece of data engineering, return me a value. Now do this piece of data engineering, return me a value. Now do this piece of data engineering, return me a value. And that's gonna be all done within one notebook, that kind of orchestration. If we wanna get even more complex, we can do that concurrently, right? So if the order of these, order of operations doesn't matter, then we can run multiple notebooks concurrently using this run multiple. So these are re three really powerful tools that we can use to kind of automate and orchestrate how we run notebooks within a notebook session. So the next one we're gonna be looking at is msbotutils.credentials. So here we've got two methods available to us. It's the get token and get secret. So the final thing I wanted to look at was to go back to the file system section of msbotutils and just show you how to do this file man. Now you can do this with Azure Data Lake Services, ADLS Gen 2, mount a container, and then just use it like you would local file container in your notebook. So let's just look at that here. So if we run this piece of code here, again, I'm importing in a spot utils from the file system library. We're gonna use the, call the method dot mount, we're going to pass in the ABFS path to the lake house that we want to mount to. And we're going to give it the name of the mount, which is bronze L lake house, right? So that's successfully set up. We've got the local path now, and the mount point is called bronze LH, right? The source is here, which is what we gave it up here. This is just confirming what we've just seen there. So we've got a few different mounts. This one is the one that we've just created. And so now we can access files in from this location via this local path, right? So we can just call bronze LH, which is our mount point, and we can retrieve files and we can query files in a different lake house from within our notebook. 